Okay, so now that we have a chisel cutter, we're going to make a common tool in blacksmithing called the butcher. Um, it's basically the chisel cutter, but we've got to swap in a 90 degree angle. So uh, first thing we're going to do is copy paste and block out our chisel cutter. And then we're going to call this chisel butcher. Okay, and the chisel butcher is meant for pushing material around. But um, generally, the only thing you need to know is that there's a 90 degree angle ish involved um, so depending on what you're trying to do in terms of your uh, shaping you may adjust this so let's uh, let's just call this right here mm -hmm. and uh, what's our standard 15 100 and then the angle uh, we're gonna keep the angle function uh, but it's kind of a weird trick so Let's just make sure that we have the exact same thing. How do you know? I don't know. Yeah. Let's just take a look. All right, so it's functioning. You don't have any embedded objects we have to worry about, right? Um, so at this point, we need to add a 90 degree angle. So basically, we just pick a side. I'm going to pick the side that has all the weird stuff, just so that way we know what our code looks like originally. And all of a sudden, we have to ask ourselves what just happened. So when we look at it, we have this entire function here, and it says like, oh, okay, you've mirrored it, and you've gone this angle, and you've gone 90 degrees. Um, ultimately, because we are doing a mirror function and a mirror angle, that means we have uh, 60 degrees plus 60 degrees plus 90 degrees, which is what gives us this arc from this point to this point to the end of this ray. And so we just want to stick with the same angle function that we have. And there is our butcher. And so you want to make sure that this is working correctly, right? So we'll just take a look at our butcher feature. And we want to keep this angle as a 90 no matter what. But then we can change our offsets so that it's a 45. And then let's check and see if it's moving at 30. And it is. And so let's go to a 90 degree. So now it goes back to looking like our original cutter chisel. So we know that the butcher is in fact behaving, and that if for some reason we wanted an obscure angle like 120, we could. And if we wanted to change the offset of our butcher, we could just put in some other number. Now occasionally that's going to create a failure that you don't know about. Um, and that's because when we do this here, remember we're subtracting an entire rectangle from the body of the bar. So if we adjust this to 60, right, all of a sudden we're eliminating half of our bar stock. And that's something you want to be aware of. That, uh, there will be failings in your parametric design if you don't get too um, cautious with how you've designed your model. So we'll leave that at 90 for now. And we're going to pass it one new thing, and we're going to call that butcher angle, right? Not butter angle, butcher angle. There we go. And then this will be the butcher angle. And we just want to make sure that when we pass that value, uh, it still functions the way we remember. So now you can change your butcher angle to something else. You say 60 leads to a problem, but only when my angle is 120. So if we just change that to 80, all of a sudden the butcher is going to behave again. So that's all you need to know for making a good butcher. <clears throat> this tool is really useful when you're getting into nooks and crannies and trying to push material away in uh, manners that are not symmetrical. So we're going to save this call this the butcher chisel.